Good morning, church. Are you excited to be at church this morning? Yeah. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm glad you are here. I'm glad you're here. Turn to the neighbor you just ignored because you're not as glad that they're here, but you still are glad that they're here. And say, I'm glad you're here too. Hey, we are in a new series called We Are New Hope. Turn to your neighbor and say, you are new hope. That was weak. That was about four of you that said it. Turn to your neighbor and say, we are, or say, you are, New hope. new hope, new hope. This is who we are. We're in a new series that we started last week looking at who we are as a church. And if you're new to New Hope, what a great time to uh, be here and learn about who New Hope is, what the values of New Hope are. Last week we kicked it off week one with we are relational. And uh, what I love about New Hope is that New Hope is not just a building that we come to for church, but New Hope is you. New Hope is, is a family to be a part of. We together are the church. We are New Hope. And last week, uh, we were looking at we are relational, and we took some time in the sermon to maybe meet somebody new. Uh, and maybe for some of you, that time, it felt like it lasted all day that you were talking to that person. You're like, this is the longest I've ever, like this is, this is way too long. And some of you, it went way too fast. But you met somebody new. Uh, and I wanna encourage you today, don't be weird about it, okay? Don't be like, I talked to that person last week, but I'm not sure if I should say hi. No, you should say hi, okay? You should talk to them. And maybe you're going, uh, but I can't remember their name. Like, and I, I, I just, I've got a trick for you this morning, okay? If you met someone last week, you can't remember their name this week, and you're going, man, what is their name? Here's what you do. You go up to that person. You go, hey, uh, don't know if you remember me. My name's Zach. We met last week, and I forgot your name. What's your name? That's all you do. That's the trick is you ask them their name, and guess what? They're going to tell you. It's crazy. It's crazy how it works. Uh, and as a church, we're going to decide that I'm not going to be offended if somebody asks me my name, all right? Is that a deal? Is that a, can we make that deal? All right, everybody put your right hand up. I will not be offended when someone asks me my name. Boom. Done. It is decided, all right? We're not going to be offended, but we're going to ask people their name. We're, we are a relational Church, turn your name and say, you are new hope. You are new hope, that is who we are. And today I'm excited as, as we're jumping into week two and looking at we are generous. Say generous. We are generous. It doesn't take long of being at new hope to find that new hope is a very generous church. That you are a very generous people, that, that we are generous. And it doesn't take long to see that new hope is very generous when it comes to missions. Many weeks, uh, I believe tonight there is a missionary that is coming. Many times we have a missionary that shares on a Sunday morning, a Sunday night. We are generous in, in sending people out. We're generous in sending missions trips out. We're generous in giving. Last year, I believe New Hope gave around $1.4 million to missions. That's $1.4 million that you decided is above and beyond what I'm already giving. That's $1.4 million that we decided we don't need this. We're sending this out. And it would be easy to be a church that is building this, this building over here and going, oh man, we need to figure out a way to pay for this. Let's pull back in certain areas so that we can get that done. But instead we're saying the need here is just as important as the need out there. They need this too. And we are generous. We are giving to them. And when we understand the why we give, it makes it a lot easier to give. When we understand that there are people in other parts of the world that have never heard the name Jesus. Something that for many of us, we've grown up knowing. We, we've seen it on TV shows. We've read it in our Bible. We've learned about it at school. We were able to come to church weekly, bi-weekly, multiple times, and be in Bible studies, and there are some people who have never heard the name. Of course I'm gonna give to that. Of course I'm gonna give so that they can hear about Jesus. When we hear about people who have unclean drinking water, People in places like Tanzania where the, the water they're drinking, there's animals walking through it. Water that you would have a hard time even standing in, and it's the water that they are drinking. Of course I'm gonna to give to build clean water wells. Of course I'm gonna to give to meet that need. Of course I'm gonna be generous. And what I love is that when we give to these water wells, it's not just a water well that we're building, but there's also a church that's being built right next to it. So it's not just a physical need we're meeting, it's a spiritual need. We're giving them physical water and living water. Of course I'm gonna be generous to that. We are a generous church when it comes to missions. Of course, I'm gonna be generous when I hear about people who are stuck in sex trafficking, people that are right here in our state that are stuck in human trafficking. They say that human trafficking profits around $150 billion a year. 
That's more than Apple, it's more than Target, it's more than Tesla, that's more than Starbucks, it's more than the NFL, it's more than all of these other things. It is a big business. Traffickers, they found that I can sell a gun once, I can sell a drug once, but I can sell a person 20 plus times a day. And many times it's, it's children that are 11, 12, 13 years that are being trafficked multiple times a day. And we at New Hope, we say, there's a problem, there's a need, I'm gonna be generous and give to that. And we have missionaries that are working to rescue them and to restore them. That's why we give, of course we're going to give. Of course we're going to help people. You know, I, I think of uh, the world's largest compass. It's in Edwards Air Force Base. I think we have a picture of this. This is the world's largest compass. This is uh, almost a mile wide. Uh, it would be very hard to see what this is if you were on ground level, but it takes you being very high up in elevation in order to see that this is a compass. This is the world's largest compass and it's right by an emergency landing strip. And at this base is a, a place where they test lots of new planes and test different things. And the reason that they have this compass is so that when someone is up testing something, if their gauges start to go bad, if they lose which direction they are going, that from a long ways away, they're able to look down and see this and know what direction they need to turn to. Now hear me, they didn't build the world's largest compass to say, hey, we built the world's largest compass, we're in the Guinness Book of World Record. They built the world's largest compass in order to help those people around them. My heart would be that New Hope someday would be the church that gives more mon money to missions than any other church out there. That we would be the number one giving church. Not to say, look at us, we're the number one giving church, but because we wanna help the most people. Bigger isn't better for bigger sake, but bigger is always better when it helps more people. And that's who we are, we are generous. It doesn't take long of being around New Hope to find that New Hope is generous. There's buckets up here to give to people in the church who are in need because we are generous. It doesn't take long to see uh, that there are many volunteers that work to make New Hope happen every week on the worship team, on the tech team, the parking lot, the nursery, the kids, the cleaning. I felt like as Pastor Brian and Pastor Austin were giving announcements, they were just like preaching my sermon for me. I'm like, you guys just finish the announcements and give an altar call from the announcements and we're gonna call it good there. Uh, but this is who we are, we are generous. We're generous in giving, we're generous in serving. That is who New Hope is. And the reason why we are generous is very simple. Our whole religion of Christianity, it revolves around a relationship with Jesus. Jesus who came from heaven to earth, perfect heaven to sinful earth, to die on the cross for me, to die on the cross for you, to cover your sins. His life for our life, talk about an act of generosity, that he would give his life for me and because he gave his life for me, of course I'm gonna live my life in response to that. Of course I'm gonna live a life of generosity, of being generous back because of what he's done for me. This is why we are generous. This morning, I don't wanna talk for long. I have five points there, only about an hour each, uh, and it's gonna go quick this morning. Just kidding, we're not doing that. Pastor Weaver would be very proud of me, but I'm, I'm not doing that this morning, all right? So five points this morning of we are generous, five areas that we are generous in, five areas that we are generous. The first area that we are generous is we are generous in our talk, say talk. We're generous in our talk. At New Hope, we're generous in encouraging people. We're generous in building others up. We're generous in complimenting people. It feels like we live in a world uh, that is very negative all the time, doesn't it? It, feel, it doesn't take long of scrolling on Facebook to be like, man, everything is negative. Everybody's putting each other down. There's, there's not much of building up. It's more tearing down. But we're saying that we are a church that we're generous with our talk. We're generous in building others up. And, and I don't know about you, but I, I get it. Like there are times where I will buy something off Amazon and when that item shows up to my house and it works exactly how I wanted it to work and it, it's everything that I thought it would be, rarely do I think to review that item because it worked how I thought. But when it shows up and it's not what I thought, when it doesn't work how I thought, then it's like, oh, I need to get on and I need to make sure that, that people know that this doesn't work. Why is it that we are quick to, to bring that negative, that we're quick to tear something down, but not as quick to build things up? I don't know, maybe, maybe for some it's, it's insecurity. Like if I, if I build them up, then I, that's kind of me tearing myself down or, or maybe it's just this thought of, well, they've never encouraged me, so why should I encourage them? But can I tell you this morning that generosity is unconditional. It's not about what other people have done for me. It's I'm living a life of generosity and I'm gonna 
be generous with my talk. I'm gonna be generous with my encouragement. One of my good friends, uh, his name is Phil Johnson. He's a, a youth pastor in Minnesota. And if you've ever been around Phil Johnson, you know that Phil is generous with his talk. He is the type of person that when you're with him, he encourages, he builds up. You feel like when you leave a conversation with him that he is in my corner. That, that he's, I just feel like a better person after being with him. Let's be a church that is like this, a church that is generous with, with our compliments, a church that is generous with building others up. Understand that this seems like such a, a simple idea, but Proverbs 18 tells us that death and life come from the power of our tongue. It's from the power of our tongue. It, from the words we say, it can bring life to someone. It can build someone up. It can encourage. From the words we say, it can bring death. Now, I'm not saying that we're gonna be so uh, generous with our talk that it, it's not genuine. There's, there's a, a point that you can cross that, but we're gonna be genuine with it. And not that sometimes giving uh, critical feedback is, is a bad thing, it's, it can be a good thing. But if I was to go to Pastor Austin and I was to tell Pastor Austin all the things that he should work on and all the things that he's not great at and never tell him anything that he's good at, he's probably just gonna blow me off and be like, well, that. I don't need to listen to that. But when I have a conversation with Pastor Austin, when I have relationship, because we are relational, and I'm using my words to encourage, and I'm using my words to build up, then when I say something that is gonna help him maybe work on something that he's not as good at, he's gonna hear it more. We're generous with our talk. Say we're generous. We're generous with our talk. Number two is time. Time. 365 days a year, 20 four hours in a day, 60 minutes in an hour, 60 seconds in a minute. It's the same amount of time that we all have. All of us, we, we're, we all are working on the same clock. We're all working on the same time schedule. We all only have so much time. One of the missionaries that we support, his name is Dick Brogdon, and he has a devotional. And in his devotional, he challenges to, to tithe your time. To tithe is, is to give God 10%. And he asks, are you giving God 10% of your time? 144 minutes every day. How are you spending your time? Because it's easy to, to talk to God and be like, God, I just don't have time to read my Bible. God, I just don't have time to pray. God, I don't have time to, to serve in that area. God, I just don't have time. And I think God's going, what do you mean you don't have time? Two hours and 24 minutes of every day belong to me. It's crazy to me how we can sit on our couch and we can watch a horrible Netflix docu-series or we can watch multiple uh, sporting events or we can watch, uh, we can sit there and we can binge HGTV, Chip and Joanna games, Fixer Upper, and we can start thinking of all the ways that we can like fix up our house. And we'll sit there and we'll, we'll spend all that time there, but we won't give God a portion of the time to talk about how he can fix up our heart, how he can fix up our life. How are we spending our time? Because at New Hope, what we are saying is we are generous with our time. That all the time that I have has been given to me by God, therefore, I'm gonna be generous with it. Understand that you will never have a time in life where you stumble across having more time. Like there's never gonna be a point of your day where like, oh, two hours and 24 minutes that I don't have anything else I could be doing? I guess I'm gonna read my Bible right now. We're never going to have that. Hear me, unless you make time for God, you won't have time for God. It takes making that time. It, it takes making that schedule, making that decision that I'm gonna set aside this time. I'm gonna set aside this time to serve. There's never gonna be a point where you're going, Wednesday nights from six to eight o'clock, I, I don't have anything else going on at, those, at that time. No, it takes setting aside time saying, I'm gonna serve in kids on those nights. I'm gonna serve in youth on those nights. I'm gonna serve cleaning at this time. It's setting aside that time. It's making that time. And we are saying we are generous with the time that God has given us. And time, it goes hand in hand with point number three, that we are generous with our talents. With our talents. First Peter 4.10 says this, Maybe, there it is. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Use whatever gift, whatever talent, whatever ability. I wanna ask you, what are the gifts, what are the talents, what are the abilities that God has given you? And are you using them for yourself or are you using them for God's glory? Are you using them for other people? Are, are you being a witness with those things? You know, a, a thief would say, what's yours is mine, I'll take it. 
A selfish person would say, what's mine is mine, I'll keep it. A generous person would say, what's mine has been given to me by God, I'll share it. I'm gonna be generous with it. God's given you talents, and maybe those talents are, are singing, it's, it's playing an instrument, maybe it's cleaning, it's, it's cooking, it's making coffee, it's being with kids. God has given you talents. Are we using those talents for ourselves, or are we using them to be a witness? Are we using them to build others up? And really, it goes hand in hand with time. Because what we say is I'm gonna be generous with my time and I'm gonna be generous with my talents. I'm gonna set aside this time and I'm gonna use my talents to be on the worship team. I'm gonna set aside my time and I'm gonna use my talents to serve in early childhood. I'm gonna set aside time and I'm gonna use my talents to mold the grass. I'm gonna set aside time and my talents to, to bake cookies for someone in my neighborhood. It's, it's using my time and it's using my talents. It's God has given this to me, therefore I'm gonna use it for his glory. I love that everything that God has given us, he wants to give to us and through us. That God wants to use us. That, that even with what we see with the Holy Spirit is that the Holy Spirit comes to us to work through us. Everything, it's, it's, we're, a, we're a vessel, we're, we're making ourselves available for him to flow through us to other people. He wants to use you. Turn to and said, he wants to use you. He wants to use you. So we have, number one, we're generous with our talk, we're generous with our time, we're generous with our talents. The fourth one is that we are generous with our treasure. We're generous with our treasure. Matthew 6 says this, do not store up for yourself treasures, say treasures, on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures, say treasures, in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. I, what I see throughout the Bible is, is throughout all the parables where Jesus is talking, about a third of them have to do with treasure. Uh, they have to do with your money. I think it's interesting that a third of what Jesus talked about had to do with money. I think it's because he knew that we'd struggle with serving money and not him. That we'd struggle with serving money and not other people. I wanna ask you a question this morning. Do you love money and use people or do you use money to love people? How, how are we being generous with our treasure? How are we being generous with what God has given us? It, it's, it's, it can be a tough thing talking about money. I, I know that as we start to talk about money sometimes, like the moment that I talk about treasure, all of a sudden I saw some of you like, ah, ah, talking about money, why do we have to do it? And there's like that vein that starts like bursting on your forehead a little bit, like, ah, the church, they've always gotta talk about money. And I, I wanna address something. I saw a while ago on Facebook, one of those things that was just like trending out there saying, uh, if money is evil, then why does the church talk about it all the time? And I was waiting for the fact checkers to come in on this one, like where are you guys at now? Uh, because it's the love of money is the root of evil. It's the love of money. Understand that having money, having nice things is not a sin. It's not you having those things, it's when those things have you. That's when it becomes a problem. And what we're saying is that New Hope those things don't have us. At New Hope, my hand is open. I am generous. At New Hope, I am generous with the things that God has given me. Understand that God, had, everything we have has been given to us by God. We, we, we tithe, we, we give God 10%, and let's talk about the tithe. You giving the tithe is not you being generous, it's you being obedient. When I give 10% of, of my money to God, that's not me saying, oh, I'm so generous, I, I'm giving him. No, that's really, we, we look at it the wrong way. It's not me giving 10% of, of my money to God, it's God's letting me have 90% of what is his. It's, it's, uh, he's okay with just 10%, and being generous is everything that goes above and beyond that. Being generous is when I give to missions. Being generous is when I give to a building project. Being generous is when I give to a dollar blessing. Can I tell you something about treasure? Never once in my life have I given money away, have I, have I been generous with money to missions or to a person or, or to a, a need and went back and thought, man, I regret doing that. Man, I wish I didn't do that. There have been things in my life that I've purchased for myself, investments that I've made for myself that I've looked back and thought, I didn't need to do that. But never have I thought, man, I wish I had that $1,000 back. Man, I wish I had that $50 back. Man, I, w I wish that I had that money back because being generous, it does something for your heart. Being generous, it's, it's what God has called us to do. And maybe you're here and, and this idea of, of giving your money is just this hard thing for you to, to think about. I think uh, our, 
the, our whole religion of following Jesus, it can be kind of funny because we talk about, God, I surrender my life to you. God, I surrender my relationships. You can have my spouse, God. God, I surrender my kids. Please, God, you can have my kids. Like, we're willing to, like, surrender all of these areas of our life, but then it's like, oh, my money? Oh, man. Why, we, why do we have to talk about that? Like, we're willing to give everything, but we don't want to talk about that one area. And maybe you're here and, and you've experienced something in the past, something that, that's made you leery of maybe someone mishandled it, maybe someone wasn't honest with it and you're not really sure, but can I encourage you this morning to not let a past poor experience prevent you from the future plans and potential that God has for you when you're generous with your finances. There's a blessing that comes from an open hand. You know, this verse, it, it says, for where your treasure is, there your heart is. Where your treasure is, there your heart. Can I tell you something this morning when it comes to being generous with our treasure? This is my shock some of you. God doesn't need your money. God doesn't like, he doesn't even want your money. What he wants is your heart. Notice the order of this. It's treasure and then heart. Lots of times I've thought, man, when I have a heart for something, when I have a heart for that thing, that's when I give. When I have a heart for it, that's when I spend money on it. But what I see here is that wherever my money goes, that's where my heart is going. Why? Because investment, it piques your interest. Think about it this way. If you have zero dollars in the stock market, you could care less what's going on in the stock market. But the moment that you put money into it, now your interest is there. So if you're here this morning and you're having having a hard time having a heart for the church, if you're having a hard time having a heart for people, having a heart for missions, don't wait for your heart to get there and then start to give. What we see in this verse is that as I give my money, my heart follows. God doesn't just want your money, he wants your heart and he knows that that's how he gets to our heart. We are generous with our treasure. We have this open hand mentality that what, ha what I have has been given to me by God, therefore I'm gonna be generous with it. Worship team, you can come. So we're generous with our talk. We're, we're encouraging people, we're building others up. We're complimenting people. We're generous with our time. We're generous with our talent. We're finding places that I can serve, places that I can get plugged in. We're, we're giving God, we're giving other people time and, and, and our abilities. We're generous with our treasure. And the last thing is the most important one. Point number five is that we are generous with the gospel. We're generous with the gospel. The greatest gift that we have ever received, I wanna ask you, are you generous with it? When you have a conversation with someone and, and they're, they're going through something and they're just going through a, a painful season and they're hurting and they're broken and they're, they're talking to you about everything that's going on, do you sit there and, and rub their back and say, I hope, I hope things get better and walk away? Or do you tell them, hey, let me talk to you about someone who changes everything? Someone who changes everything. Here's the deal. If we're generous in the first four areas and not generous in the fifth area of the gospel, what's the point of being generous in the first four? Like I'm just doing these things to make, to be a good person to that person until they're in the grave. But being generous with the gospel is being generous with eternity. Being generous with the gospel, it's what separates us from the world. I have a friend from high school that I, I'm still friends with on social media. And, uh, this friend, not a follower of Christ, he's, he's actually an atheist, he's in the medical field. And what I see with this person on, on social media is that this person is generous with their talk. I see him commenting on people's stuff all the time, always encouraging people. Generous with his time, serving at, at different events that are going on, uh, like serving at a, a water tent, handing out waters. Generous with his talent, using his medical skills to serve different areas. He's generous with his treasure. There's always like a GoFundMe that, that you can give to, that he's giving to. What separates us from him? It's the gospel. It's the gospel. It's, it's the one thing that changes everything. At New Hope, we are generous with the gospel. At New Hope, we recognize that the workplaces that I'm in, the neighborhoods that I'm in, the family that I'm in, I'm in that not by accident, but on purpose, for a purpose, that God is working through me, that I'm being generous with this greatest gift that has ever been given to me. I'm sharing it with them. Would you stand with me across the room this morning? We're a generous church, and I want you just to take a moment and just reflect. 
where in my life do I need to be more generous? Where in my life have maybe I've been generous at a time, but I haven't been lately because this idea of we are generous, it's not just I'm generous in one of those areas, it's I'm generous in all of them. It's not just this one's for me and, and none of the others. No, they're, they're for all of, all five are for all of us. Maybe you're here this morning and you'd recognize, I haven't been generous with my talk. I've been putting people down more than I've been building people up and, and I need to just start complimenting. I need to start being an encourager. Maybe it's, I, I need to be generous with my time. I need to be generous with my talents. I need to find a place to serve. And maybe you leave here today and you go to early childhood and say, how can I serve? Or, or you get online and, and you look at different areas that you can get plugged in. You talk to Pastor Brian and, and you get plugged in to serve on the usher team. Or you're saying, I, I, I wanna be generous with my time. I wanna be generous with my talents. I wanna be generous with my treasure. And, and maybe your response today is for the first time ever you give and you give in a dollar blessing of, of I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give to someone who's in need. My hand is open. I don't need that $5 for that car. I don't need that, that money. I, I'm gonna give that to someone else. We're being generous with that. And maybe today it's, I'm gonna be generous with the gospel. Maybe there's a coworker, someone who works down the hall from you and you know that you need to tell them about Jesus. A neighbor that you need to talk about Jesus with. I believe that there are some people here this morning and God has called you to be a missionary. God's called you to a place like India or Brazil or Mexico, he's, he's called you to a place. And lots of times we get in this, this mindset of we come up with all the excuses. Well, I don't have the training to do that. I don't have the schooling to do that. I'm too young to do that. I'm too old to do that. But if God's calling you to it, I wanna challenge you, encourage you today, be obedient. And it's an act of generosity. Say, I'm, I'm being generous with my life. I'm going wherever God is calling me to go. So here's how I wanna respond this morning. As you know the area that God's speaking to you this morning and I wanna just pray over you and they're just gonna go, the worship team's just gonna go into a song and I want you just to have this time of reflection with God. Maybe singing the song as, as a declaration, maybe it's coming forward and it's, it's giving in the dollar blessing, maybe it's just coming forward as just a, an outward expression of an inward decision that I'm be, gonna be generous with my life, I'm laying that down. But what area is God calling you to be generous with this morning? God, I thank you for every person here. I thank you for a church that is so generous, a church that is so giving, a church that has so many volunteers, so many people that wanna serve, that wanna get plugged in, a church that gives above and beyond, God. I thank you for this family. And I pray that this, this idea of being generous wouldn't just be a thing of who New Hope was, but it's, it's who we are, it's who we are gonna continue to be. God, I pray that people in the room this morning that are struggling with, with kind of that closed hand mentality of, of holding on to certain things, that we would learn to open up our hands, that we learn to trust you, that we learn to step out in faith and we'd see that you're a faithful God, that you're a good God, that, that you love us, that you have good things in store for us and that we, they would see the blessings that come from being faithful, from being obedient to you. We love you, we thank you. We worship you this morning, amen. Available to be generous, available to be generous with our talk, be generous with our time, with our talents our treasures we're generous with the gospel turn your neighbor and say you are new hope turn your neighbor and say you are new hope and you are generous I want to say a prayer over you and just encourage you that as you leave today that we're generous as we go out those doors that people notice there's something different about you yeah everybody has all these areas that they're generous in but yet there's something different about you God, I thank you for every person here this morning, God. Thank you for a generous church, a church that's willing to say I'm available, that if you call me to it, God, I'm gonna say yes. Wherever you want me to go, I'll go. What you want me to do, I'll do. What you want me to give, I'll give. I'm available to you, God, speak to me. I pray that as we leave here this morning, that this would be our prayer every day. God, I'm available to you. God, use me today. God, I wanna be generous today. Point me to people who need it. Point me to a place that needs it, God generous. We love you and we thank you and we pray. Amen. Amen. Be blessed church. Have a great Sunday. We'll see you back here tonight.